Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Bean here, and today I'm coming at you with my June 2022 wrap-up. Funny thing about this wrap-up, I don't actually own any of the books that I read, so I did really good on um, reading like ebooks and and library books, so that's that's a plus. I managed to read 11 books in the month of June. I did not add up the number of pages or anything because some of these were ebooks and I did have a DNF this month, so I'm still not sure how I should count those if I should just count the number of pages I read, but whatever. Anyways, I'm just gonna hop right into it um, because I'm gonna try and make this video pretty short. I have my phone here that's got all of the items on it. So let's get started, shall we? All right, starting with the beginning of June, I read, well, actually, um, John and I took a trip down to Ohio to visit my sister as she was packing up and heading home from college. And the trip was just long enough for us to be able to listen to an audiobook. And so we listened to Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman, this was a reread for me. Technically, I have listened to this audiobook once before, but it was like five years ago, so it's been a while. Um, we both have a big interest in mythology, and Norse mythology has always been one that has captivated our attention. Um, so we got to listen to Loki and all of his antics on the way to and from Ohio. So it was a lot of fun. I really enjoy this audiobook. I think it's very well done. I know that the mythology itself varies depending on the teller. Uh, this version, I also remember Neil Gaiman gave a little spiel at the beginning that said he adjusted some of these to fit his writing style, which makes sense. So I highly recommend it, and given that he did give that disclaimer at the beginning, um, I gave it a 5 out of 5. I enjoy this. I always enjoy this audiobook whenever I listen to it. It's just a lot of fun. Um, and I love mythology, so it, it just counts as one that I will listen to whenever I can. All right, the next book that I read um, was actually an e-arc that I got, and that is Lost and Found in Paris by Leon Dolan. Um, I DNF'd this book at 25% of the way through, Honestly, because I was bored. The concept of the story was really good and there was a great idea in there and I appreciated and I was sympathetic towards the main character and what she went through. As the pages dragged on, I felt that the exposition and the sheer amount of details and name dropping um, that this character felt like she had to do and just the sheer amount of info dumping at the beginning was unnecessary and really took me out of the story completely. Um, and I just ended up getting really, really annoyed. Um, and really, I, I didn't care. So because of that, I did end up DNFing this book. Next, I picked up a brand new manga series for myself and I read volume one of Devil's Line by Ryo Hanada. This is a vampire manga, which I actually have never read a vampire manga before, but this one's gained a lot of popularity, and I think I might continue with it. It was good. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. It was good, but it wasn't, like, the best manga I've read in a while. Um, I don't think at this point I would collect them. Maybe eventually if the story started really picking up. Um, but it was good. This follows two characters. Um, Tsu Tsukasa is a college student. She's rescued by a Nazi who, as when she's attacked by a friend who happens to be a vampire. Um, and a Nazi is half vampire, half human, and he's part of a special police force that hunts down um, vampires and basically it gets them to not hurt humans. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. I think it's well done. I did also read volume two this month and I enjoyed it. I, um, this, it definitely got a little bit deeper into some of the, um, nuances of this police force and of this world and things kind of ratcheted up as far as the scale of what's happening. So I did appreciate both these and both of them did get a four out of five from me. 
The next book, well, the book I technically read between them was Hide by Kirsten White. So this was my first dive into Kirsten White since I read And I Darken. So I read And I Darken back when it came out, and I haven't read another Kirsten White book since then, because I wasn't the biggest fan of And I Darken. It was good, but I didn't continue with the series, also because the rest wasn't out at the time that I read it. Because that is, like, me in a nutshell. But I did read this one, and I actually really did enjoy it. Um, while I did find it to be a bit predictable at points, I did figure out very quickly what was going to happen in this story. Um, I appreciated the supernatural element, I appreciated all the work that went into it, and I really did appreciate the characters overall. I thought they were fun, they were interesting, I don't want to say they were unique because they were kind of cookie cutter to a point, um, but overall, I really liked this book and this, the characters and the storyline, and one of the things I value about thrillers is that they have me thinking by the end about some sort of something, and this book definitely had me thinking at the end of it, so that's always a good thing. It got a 4 out of 5 from me. The next book I read was a library book. Well, a couple of these have already been library books, but this was a nonfiction. So I read, I have to read it. The Raven Master, My Life with the Ravens at the Tower of London by Christopher Scaife. So I ended up listening to the audiobook of this, and he narrates it himself, which I really appreciated. And honestly, for the most part, I found it very interesting. I don't know a lot about ravens, or didn't before I read this, and honestly, I learned a lot from this book. And I learned a lot also about the Tower of London, which I didn't think I would also learn a lot about, but I did. And it was kind of cool. I enjoyed the new subject, and I can already tell you that ravens are quickly becoming one of my top three animals. So, yes, I enjoyed this. I gave it a 5 out of 5, but again, it's a memoir. I have a hard time... Um, when a memoir is well written and well performed, I have a hard time giving it anything less than a 5 out of 5, because I'm not in it to judge someone's story. But I thought this was very well done, very interesting. He had some great funny stories in there about his time with the Ravens and um, all the different character and all the different personalities that the different Ravens had. So it was actually a lot of fun to listen to. The next book I read I picked up off of Kindle Unlimited um, and I really just should have read the description closer, and I just read Frost Giant Loki. Um, <laughs> uh, so this was, this is by Lisa Penn. It's the first book in the Gods and Monsters series. I don't think I'm continuing with it. Um, I gave it a 2.5 out of 5. This book basically reminded me a lot of um, uh, Blue Alien Smut, but with Loki as a god. And it didn't... I'm such a nerd. It didn't follow how I like the, North, the mythology to go as well. I am fine with Loki having horns. I am fine with all of that. I mean, Lo Loki slept with everything. Loki is the pansexual of mythology. Fight me. Um, <laughs> but... I don't know, like, Fenrir's part in this kind of bothered me, um, and I did appreciate this one more than I did the the Blue Alien smut. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the book off the top of my head. I did enjoy this one a bit more than I did think it was well done overall. There was actually a plot line, there was conflict, there was character development as well, so I did appreciate it. Um, but 2.5 2, 2. out of 5 for me. I just can't give it anything more than that. I, the next book that I read, though, I did enjoy, and it was a little bit of a surprise for me because I didn't know what to expect going in, and that was Another Fine Myth by Robert Lynn Aspirin. This is the first book in the Myth Adventures. Um, this book's just hilarious. Honestly, it did not take itself seriously for one moment, and right from the beginning, you knew you were in for just basically a um, Robin Hood men in tights sort of good time of slightly breaking the third wall every once in a while and having main characters who have no idea what's happening literally because no one's telling them what happened and they didn't realize 
that the multiverse was a thing. They're just from this small peasant town, and magic's a thing, and that's exciting. Um, but a multiverse, I, st he still didn't get what it was, and it was perfectly well done. It was great. I appreciated it. Um, this is a book that was written in, I think, the 70s. I want to say it was the 70s, so there's some terms that are not modern. Um, there's some issues in it, but it was overall, I thought it was very well done, and I enjoyed my time reading it. It gets a 4 out of 5 from me. The next book that I read I absolutely loved, and that was The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. This is the second Simone St. James book that I have read, and honestly I liked this one a lot better. So this follows... Claire. This follows Claire, who is a blogger. Um, she runs a, a true crime blog called The Book of Cold Cases um, that all stemmed from she had a traumatic experience as a child that has to do with true crime, um, and she's kind of become a true crime fanatic because of that. So. Claire developed so much over the course of the book, and she's such an interesting person, and I really did enjoy her point of view. I felt like I actually could talk to her, which was nice. Um, the other point of view is from Beth Greer, who is our, I guess, antagonist of sorts. Basically, um, Beth Greer was... Con was accused of a crime, um, but then she was never convicted of said crime. She walked free um, for the murder of her father, I believe it was. Yes, for the murder of her father and of some other men in town. Um, and basically, Claire is the first person she has offered an interview to in over 25, 30 some odd years. Um, and she feels like it's finally time to tell her story, and so she does, and alternating perspectives. Um, I think that this book was really well done. There is a slight supernatural element to it, and honestly, I think that Simone St. James finally found a very good way of integrating um, the science fiction into this true crime story. It worked so well. It was flawless. I will say that the big reveal, I guess, the first one, came a little bit earlier than I expected it to, but I had kind of already predicted it, like it wasn't a big surprise, it was more of a, well yeah, I mean that does make sense, and then we just kind of move on. Um, but overall, this book, I really loved it, and I cannot wait to read more from Simone St. James. The last book that I read in the month of June was a graphic novel, and that's Over the Garden Wall Soulful Symphonies. Now this was honestly a very fun, fun, I say in the Over the Garden Wall sense, um, little miniature graphic novel, because it was a full story um, that followed all of our characters. So we had Wirt and Greg and Beatrice and the frog, whose name keeps changing. Um, so pick a name, that's usually his name, um, and usually Mr. Cat. I think Kitty was the one we always went with, um, and Kitty the Frog, um, and they end up finding a town where there are no people, and try, then they're invited to perform on stage, and it's a whole bunch of shenanigans, and it's so well done, though. I thought it was very, very good. The art was slightly different, but again, the creator of Over the Garden Wall had a hand in it, and it was really good. I really enjoyed it. So, that got a 4.5 out of 5 from me. So, yeah. Well, that's what I got for you guys here today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, now is the perfect time to give it a thumbs up and to hit that subscribe button down below. We post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and the occasional Sunday, and if you want to be reminded when we post these videos, hit the little bell icon down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. I know that most of you watching do not, but I would, we would really appreciate it if you did. So until next time, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep reading. Bye!